we have an inherent understanding of rhythm. After all, as a baby knit together in your mother's womb, you heard rhythm, 80 beats per minute. Rhythms like rituals that soothe us, beats like guidelines that rule us. Minutes, days, years, lights spinning through the cosmos and rotations tilting around an axis to make the leaves fall, to make the snow fall, to make the flowers bloom. This is our rhythm. For six days he labored and created the world. And on the seventh, we live in repetition. Different beats play different ways. We live between the pauses. And if we listen closely, just underneath the surface, his heart beats still for us. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hey everyone, just want to give you a warm welcome, everyone that's tuning in from New York City and all around the world. Our hearts go out to you. Georgie and I are praying for you and thinking of you daily. Let's continue to be the church in this time. Let's continue to look after each other, pray for each other, even as the quarantine keeps on extending out. Let's really understand that God is with us and we're in this together. We truly are built for this. And let's continue to be resilient disciples in this time. God has got this. He is with us and He is for us. And that's what I want to speak about today. I want to speak about maybe maximizing this time together. I just believe that God has a deeper work that He wants to do. And so today I want to look at a scripture, one of my favorite scriptures, but really in this time it's come alive to me even more. And the scripture is in Matthew 11. We're looking at this passage where Jesus shows us what's available to us in this time. The intimacy, power, and rest we can have from our connection with the Father. He says, come to me. This is Jesus speaking. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I don't know about you, that's what we need. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Key word, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Isn't it beautiful? We serve a God that is gentle. He comes down to where we are. He doesn't say, come up to this higher point. He says, I am lowly, I am humble. He comes down into our grief, into our sorrow, into everything that we're facing. And then he says, you will find rest. Oh my gosh, rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What a God we serve. I believe we're, we're in a time when we can get stronger in our relationship with God. Not many of us have a lot of firsthand experience with yokes today, but in Jesus' world, it was an image of two oxen being yoked together to pull a heavy load or plow a field. But yoke had a secondary meaning as well. It was a metaphor used by the religious scholars to teach what they called the yoke of the law. For them, a yoke was their way of describing the teachings or expectations they put on people's shoulders. In a literal sense, in farming, the yoke provided connection between two ox, and it was the mechanism that allowed those ox to work. So when the religious leaders talked about a yoke, it was about a student being united with the teacher. Think about two oxen together and then walking with that teacher to plow the ground or do the work. But what Jesus offers is so different than the religious leaders of the day or even to what we can be carrying. Jesus describes these other religious yokes in Matthew 23 verse 4. Let's read it together. It says, They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. Maybe your life has felt like that. You felt like the expectations laid on you were unbearable. And so often we lay those yokes upon ourselves. No one else is doing it. I know I lay a yoke on my shoulders that God hasn't even laid upon my shoulders. But also whether it's things that we're searching for in money or fame or power or success and in our work, we, we tend to be laying these things on our shoulders. Or maybe we carry the burdens of fears and worries Maybe not maybe, but we definitely do in this time. Troubles and grief and all these things that this new season has put upon us, they are burdens and they are heavy things that are weighing on each of us. Even as we watch 
together and join in in worship and uh, dive into the word in this moment together, there are things in our shoulders, whether we realize it or not, that Jesus is calling us to lift off today. And that is my prayer for each of you today, that you would recognize that this is a time where we can actually say, you know what, Jesus, we want your yoke. We want your burden, which is light. Jesus wants to strip off our old yoke and replace it with his. But are we convinced that his yoke is better than the one we're currently carrying? I love how Eugene Peterson translated this passage in the message. He says, are you tired, worn out, burn on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Watch that key phrase for this series, key phrase, I believe that Jesus is gonna teach us as a church and all those tuning in, each week we're gonna learn new rhythms that maybe we haven't had previously. Let's find a groove, let's find a beat, let's find a rhythm in His grace that truly lets us be who we are called to be and follow the awesome rhythm of grace that our Savior, our Messiah, our Rabbi Jesus, our Lord, our King sets for us. He says, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting. I love that. If it doesn't fit, make sure it fits because Jesus has a tailor-made yoke that really is going to fit your life. He goes on and says, keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Isn't that amazing? The creator of all things, Jesus, his yoke is the one with unforced rhythms of grace. And those rhythms really are the picture of those two oxen under the same yoke. He's the bigger ox. He's the one carrying all the weight. And we get to come in under his slipstream, come in under his yoke, his leadership, his authority. It's amazing because the two oxen have to be in sync, in step together. For one of them to pull faster or slower than the other would throw the entire operation off. So let's learn to walk with Jesus. We can now step into a rhythm with Him that allows us to work with ease and grace. Let's take a look at some of the rhythms I believe that Jesus modeled for us. Because when we look at the life of Jesus, we see that He's not scared to shift rhythms. He picks up pace and then He slows down. His rhythm changes based on where the Father is leading Him. Here's some examples of rhythms. The first one I wanna look at is a rhythm of rest and work. See, God created rhythms of rest and work already when He created the world. For six days He created, and Genesis 2 verse 3 tells us, so God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all His work that He had done in creation. This is where we find the origins to the Sabbath, or our day of rest. But when we look at the scripture, there's a fascinating pattern. After each day, the creation account says, and it was morning and it was night. The first day or morning and night on the second day and so on. But there's one day that doesn't say it. It's the seventh day. This is because the seventh day of the Sabbath rest was never meant to end. In fact, when Jesus declared it is finished on the cross, he was agreeing with heaven. God is not worried or stressed or wondering how it all goes. God is at rest right now and invites us also into his rest. I want you to picture this. I want you to imagine right now, God is, he fully understands what's happening with COVID-19 and he's at rest. And he's saying to us, I want you also to enter into this heavenly rest even though it seems circumstantially like everything's in chaos, everything's thrown out, He's also at that same time welcoming us into this heavenly rest that He's created. Matthew 12 verse 9 says, Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath. He's saying that He is the Sabbath. So when we come to Him, we come to the Master, the Teacher, the Rabbi, the Lord of rest. There's this idea in modern culture that we work for five days and have two days off, almost like a reward at the end of the week. But God's design is actually flipped upside down. Is it, it isn't that we work to rest, but that we rest to work. In Matthew 8 verse 23, we see an example of the rhythm of rest Jesus has available to us. But when He got into the boat, 
his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. That's exactly how I feel right now. I feel like there's just waves of news, waves of personal news, waves of different things happening in our church. And so we already see that Jesus, even in that time of storm, he wasn't uneasy. He wasn't stressed out. He was, he knew his authority so well that he took time to rest in the middle of the storm. Amazing. And I think if we understand that we also need to take breaks and recharge, we will follow the example of Jesus. Verse 25 continues, and they went and woke him saying, save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid? O oh, you of little faith. Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled saying, what sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him. So even when we're in the storm, Jesus is at peace and his message to us and to the disciples at that time is, why are you afraid? This shows us there's a rest available to us no matter what storm rages on around us. We can be like the disciples. As the storm hits, you can only imagine the panic they felt when they woke Jesus to say, save us, Lord, we are perishing. Our eyes are on the waves and the danger. Our, our eyes are on the, the COVID-19 stats, on the news, on the economy, on the job loss, and they're all real things. And Jesus has compassion and he, He's in us. He's with us in our grief. He's with us in our sorrow. But at the same time, He's also lifting our eyes from the waves and understanding that we don't need to be afraid. He's calling us into a, a whole new rhythm of not being afraid, but rather learning to take authority and also take rest in this time. This is not only because of who is in the boat, but because Jesus offers us the same authority and power that He has received from the Father. In Matthew 11, 27, Jesus reveals, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And again, in Matthew 28, verse 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So when we co-labor with Jesus, we gain access to this intimate Father connection. And now we too, by the power of His Spirit, can sleep in a storm and take authority over the wind and waves when we need to. We can say, be still, be calm, so that we also would be, be still and calm on the inside. And that's the greatest rest you need, is that the storms on the outside don't become the storms on the inside. And so when the disciples marvel at the end of the story is because they've encountered the same power of creation. The God who made the wind and the waves, the God who created everything, whose spirit hovered over the deep and spoke all things into existence. This God now speaks again and the weather, all of nature obeys Him. So this ability to rest even in the storms of life or the seasons we're in right now. Everything feels like it's coming at us. We don't have to become like the storm in order to have authority over it. Jesus just speaks to the storm and rebukes it. His words are powerful. And for us today, as we step into working from rest, we can speak life and truth into our circumstances with the same authority of our Savior. The next rhythm I wanna look at is a rhythm of solitude and a rhythm of fellowship and the balance between the two. Again and again in the gospel stories, Jesus gets alone to pray. But his life is also marked by the crowds that press in around him. And when Jesus sees the crowds coming to him, he isn't annoyed or frustrated, but rather he feels compassion. And Matthew 14 shows this juxtaposition. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. And when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. See, he had compassion because he had capacity and he had capacity because he took time to get away and have solitary time with the Father. We're experiencing a sense of isolation and seclusion as we shelter in our homes. But it's interesting that we see how it's actually harder than ever to find and have a sense of rhythm. Your phone means you're available all the time. 
It's hard to know when work hours end, or if you're now at home full time with your kids, your whole schedule has been turned upside down. Even if you're alone in your home, it's easy to get distracted or to fill up our space with a lot of noise. To call it loneliness instead of leaning into our ability to get alone with God, which is called solitude. But even in these verses, we see that although Jesus was trying to get alone to a solitary place and was literally followed by the crowds, he was getting less time than what was hoped for. He leaned into the time that he had so that he could be refilled and refreshed for relationship. Whether you're more extroverted, introverted, this can be our greatest season of encounter with God, an intentional relationship with community. If you're married, this is the season to cultivate a greater unity in your marriage. If you're sheltering alone but connecting online, be intentional about how you connect in this season. Allow the people who are walking with you to strengthen you, encourage you, and sharpen you. Don't just have endless uh, connection. Really think and prioritize church community, prioritize dinner party, prioritize Sundays and prayer meetings in the morning. These moments of connection with others are really important, but also just general uh, social time with friends, great time to reconnect. But don't be so busy with technology that you forget the most important connection, which is connection to your Heavenly Father. See, being in isolation isn't an excuse to lose connection with people. But it's actually a season, I believe, where we can become more intentional and focused in on how we love one another and how we cultivate a rhythm of connection with our Heavenly Father. The last rhythm I want to look at, and we're going to be looking at more over the coming weeks, but this one is really important in this time, a rhythm of casting cares. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus outlines this powerful message on casting our cares. In Matthew 6, it says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And isn't that true? Each day has brought a new wave of trouble, a new wave of news, a new wave of things that we could potentially worry about. And so Jesus doesn't say, hey, think about all the things you should worry about coming up in the months of quarantine and the months of what's going to happen with COVID-19. He says, just understand you have a grace for today for what is, is the worry for today and deal with that with actually seeking first the kingdom of God. So the issue is not whether we worry or not, the issue is what we seek. See, when we seek first or change what we seek, the cares are lifted. And what is worry other than imagination used in the wrong direction? What I like to say is worry is the misuse of imagination. See, worry is all of our creative power being channeled into a series of negative what ifs. What if I don't have enough? What if I can't do it? What if that doesn't come through? It's the enemy's tactic to rob us of something so valuable, our imagination, this faculty that God's given us. Just like God created for six days and then rested, we have this beautiful capacity to create. And if we're weighed down by all the cares of this world, we lose our capacity to create. And that's exactly what we need. Even if you're facing job loss or lots of storms and pressures and, and you're burdened down by all, all sorts of different weights and yokes, we won't have the power to create because our faculty to imagine a different kind of future is weighed down by cares that God can look after. And He wants us freed up to actually use this time to create a better future. And so we can free our imaginations for creative solutions for beauty, for storytelling, and for our passions. But we'll find that our imagination stays locked up as long as we carry the burdens of our worries. See, we may be locked up physically, but your creative power does not need to be isolated. Your creative power doesn't need to be locked up. You don't need to quarantine your imagination. Your imagination can run wild with possibilities and ways to collaborate with other people in church and reaching out to neighbors and serving people and loving people and doing all sorts of beautiful things, even when we're facing trouble. What Jesus says in this passage is that each day has enough worry in him for itself. But the reality is this, this actually means we need to change our rhythm. 
we actually need a daily practice of casting our cares. Because if we don't cast our cares and we don't get into a rhythm of letting Him carry those cares, we'll be way down, way down, way down. Each day will get heavier and heavier and heavier. And so there's this beautiful rhythm of casting cares each day. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 says, cast all your anxiety, not some, all your anxiety on Him. Because why? He cares for you. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So here's what I've learned through it all. Psalm 55, 22, this is like the, the summation of what we can learn. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord and measureless grace will strengthen you. This is the grace of God. This is the rhythm, rhythm I'm talking about. This is the beat. This is the groove. This is the pocket for all those musicians out there. This is the place we can sit and actually be in the rhythm of the grace of God, knowing that He's carrying the weight. He says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened and weighed down, I will give you rest. Or as the message version says, come and learn my unforced rhythms of grace. But the first step is we've got to come. We've got to take off the pride. We've got to take off the ego. We've got to stop playing God and actually come in under His amazing Lordship, His amazing leadership, and really find His rhythm. It's unforced. It's beautiful. It's empowering. It's full of rest. It's full of purpose. It's full of destiny and future. And even in this lockdown, even in this quarantine, even in this time, you can find this amazing rhythm of grace. All you need to do is come. It's open to everyone. No one is outside of it. All you need to do is say yes. The question is, are we able to just humble ourselves and learn a new rhythm? And in just a moment, you're gonna have this opportunity. All of us have this opportunity to simply click a button and say yes, lift our hand, lift our heart, open up our life and just come to Him and let Him lift some weights. Let Him lift the yoke, let Him lift whatever the rhythm that's weighing you down and come back under His grace. This is what I want for you. But more than that, this is what Jesus wants for you. And so if you've never said yes to Jesus, why don't you step into His rhythm of grace? It's the best rhythm you could ever find in all the universe. It's the same rhythm that keeps the planet spinning. It's the same rhythm that keeps the earth rotating around the sun. It's the same rhythm that keeps creation in sync. And we can actually find this beautiful rhythm in His grace. We can join in with the angels. We can join in with all of creation simply by, by saying yes to what He did on that cross and what He did through His resurrection. We can find this rhythm and walk with Him every single day. So don't be weighed down by the worries. Just come to Him now. And so let's do this. In just a moment, a prayer is going to come on the screen. I want you to say that prayer and let this weight lift off your shoulders. Before we do this, let me pray for you all across our church, all across the globe right now. Let's pray together in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you so much that you are a God that lifts weights and cares and anxieties and worries. You don't place heavy burdens on us, but your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So Lord, we receive your yoke. We receive your rhythm. We receive your grace right now. And Lord, we want to say sorry for placing things on our own shoulders. We want to say sorry for following other ways. We want to come back to you and find your unforced rhythms of grace today. So we say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to your promises. We say yes, ultimately, to your amazing love that drives out all fear. And we walk in step with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you, church. Let's walk in His grace today.